On this video, I'm going to be talking about the most profitable food businesses that you can start in 2023 and in 2024. When I talk to most people about starting a food truck or a restaurant or a ghost kitchen, they already have the idea in mind. But in this video, I really want to challenge you to think hard about what it is that you actually want to sell because it's extremely important. Your startup cost, number one, is going to depend on what it is that you're selling. How many employees you need is going to depend on what it is that you're selling. How much space you need is going to depend on what it is that you're selling. So you really have to take these things into consideration. In my case, where I sell chicken wings and fries, I need a lot of space. So not only do I need a lot of space, but there's a lot of equipment that goes into serving my food. So if chicken, for an example, it has to maintain a certain temperature it has to be below 40 degrees at all times so that's going to require me to have a refrigerator you can't just have any type of refrigerator it has to be a commercial refrigerator which are bigger and more expensive. The average commercial refrigerator is gonna cost you at least $1,500 or more. So that's just to store the chicken. So if you're talking about frying the chicken, then that's gonna require fryers. And chicken isn't a small item, so it's gonna require bigger fryers. So I recently purchased about four or five fryers and we spent around $1,000 for each fryer. I believe a little more, I'm not 100% sure, but I know it was somewhere around $1,000 to $1,200 for each fryer because we had to get bigger fryers. So if you're frying something, in fryers, you also are gonna have to have a hood. And it's not just like some hood that you can go and buy at Home Depot. It has to be a commercial grade, heavy duty hood. And I just purchased a hood for my food truck and it cost us around $4,000 just for the hood. Not to mention, I had to have a professional go and install that hood for me. So for installation of the fryers and the hood and things like that, I spent a little over $3,000 for that. So you do the math between the fryers and the hood, and having them installed and that's just for the chicken like i said we sell fries too we don't just sell regular fries we sell top fries like fries with shrimp on them fries with cheese fries with bacon which is going to require more equipment which costs more money and which costs more in manpower to be able to run that business so that brings me to one major point is that the type of food that you sell is going to determine the type of equipment that you need and the certain regulations that you're gonna have to meet. So this leads me to the first example. One profitable food business idea are baked goods. So that's like cakes and cookies and things like that. So the reason I say that is because there's something called the cottage law. The cottage law basically means that you don't have to have a commissary kitchen or a restaurant or anything like that to be able to sell baked goods. So you can actually start selling baked goods out of your house. A lot of people ask me, how can I get the money to start my business? Well, if you can start your business without having a ton of money and you can make some money and then invest that invest that money into, let's say getting a food trailer or moving to a brick and mortar, then you have a huge advantage compared to someone like me who has to have 30, 40, $50,000 to be able to start a food truck selling the type of food that I'm selling. So number one is the cottage law. Number two, you're not required to have a hood because you're not really frying anything. You don't have to have some safe way to get the grease out of the building, right? And get all the extra smoke and things like that out of the building. So you're not required to have a hood. So when I talk about the hood, it's not just the hood. In a lot of states, you're required to have a fire suppression system. So let's say that, you know, your fryers were to catch on fire that fire suppression system would automatically kick on and suppress that fire. So in my state of North Carolina on a food truck, it's not required to have one, but in a lot of states it is required and they're starting to make them become required more and more across states that don't require them currently. So that's a, a big deal. Plus, you know, that's another inspection that you have to get. Not only do you have to be inspected by the health department, but you also have to be inspected by the fire department to make sure that your hood is safe and up to code. And that can cost you easily another three, four or $5,000. So the thing about these profitable ideas that I'm sharing is they, they basically share the same benefits and that's low startup costs, little equipment, little manpower, and high markup. If you think about what it takes to make a batch of cookies, it's just, I don't know, eggs, milk, flour, sugars, chocolate chips. You can probably bake an entire batch of cookies for less than, let's say 30 bucks. And you can sell those, you can really mark those up. You can sell each cookie for like three, four, five bucks, depending on how special and how big they are. So you can literally make, let's say $200 
off of spending $30. So the cost of those items are super cheap. For me right now, for a case of chicken, it's costing me roughly $60 to $70 right now per case of chicken. And that only has about 200 wings per case. So, you know, and today alone, I spent over $1,000 in chicken to be able to, to run my business. But just imagine how much it would take you to be able to sell baked goods. So that's one of the first ideas. And I'm gonna try not to say the same thing over and over, so now I'm just really going to try to go through all of the different ideas for you. So another good idea is ice cream and milkshakes. That's another one of those things where you don't have to have a hood for. You may actually have to have a commissary. I don't think it goes under the cottage law because you're dealing with milk and things like that. But you don't have to have a fire suppression system. You don't have to have a hood system. It's relatively easy to be able to make a milkshake compared to making uh, a box of chicken wings and fries. Plus you can be super creative with it and you can really mark these items up. Another one is smoothies and juices. So it's another one of those things where the items are relatively cheap. You know, fruit is pretty cheap compared to, to other things. Like if you're selling burgers or if you're selling chicken like me. And then the equipment that goes into being able to prepare that, like you could make do with, let's say one juicer one good juicer and one good blender and some cups and some fruit and things like that. Your startup costs can be ridiculously low compared to other businesses. Plus you can also get creative with that. People are starting to become more and more health conscious. So that's something that I actually plan on doing myself. After I sell my company, Big Daddy's Wings and Things, I plan on starting a juice bar that I'm gonna call Juicy Mama. I already have it planned out, I already have the logo, we're already incorporated and things like that. So I'm not just giving you ideas that I don't think are great ideas. I think these are seriously some of the best businesses that you can start. And I'm gonna start one myself. So another one are donuts. I don't believe, and you may need to double check with your health inspector, which you should always double check with your health inspector anyways, because every health inspector and every health department is different, not even on a state to state level, but just on a city to city and a county to county level, the health department is different. But I don't think you're required to have a hood to be able to sell, let's say donuts. And if you buy the, the donut making machine, that really lowers what it takes for you to be able to make these items. It's gonna be more labor intense less versus being labor intensive because the machine will do the work for you. So if you don't need a hood, you won't need a fire suppression. And that may actually also fall under the cottage law. You just, again, have to check with your local health inspector. So I think donuts could be a great idea because you can also get creative with the, the different toppings that you will provide to your customers. And that's something that I talk about a lot. A lot of people, they make their menu too complex. They say, I wanna sell burgers. I wanna sell pizza. I wanna sell fries. I wanna sell chicken wings. I wanna sell tacos. I wanna sell this and they go really wide versus going really deep. I think it makes more sense to go deep. So that means if you're selling donuts, maybe you have a glazed donut, a powdered donut, an Oreo top donut, a cinnamon sugar donut, and just really going deep instead of going wide. So I think coffee shops can be a really good idea. Also, me personally, I just feel that Starbucks has such a huge market cap when it comes to coffee. I think if you can be creative and you can figure out how to really make yourself different and also better than Starbucks, because I, I'm, I'll confess, I'm somebody that has a Starbucks addiction. I'm not always satisfied with my coffee because I never get the same coffee every time I go. So if you can make your, your thing super consistent and maybe even a little more affordable because definitely the markup on a Starbucks coffee is ridiculous. I think I pay like seven bucks for a cup of coffee that realistically probably costs about 50 cents to make because it's just coffee and it's water, plus the, the, you know, the milk and the sugars and things like that. These are also items that are relatively cheap. So I think coffee can be a great idea if you figure out how to really make yourself stand out against your competitors, which one of your biggest competitors is gonna be Starbucks by a long shot. And so another one I think is a really good idea is craft cocktails. So a while ago I had the idea to basically serve cocktails on uh, on a trailer. So in, in the state I was in at the time, South Carolina, they didn't allow it. I haven't really checked if they allow it or not in North Carolina, but if you could somehow do uh, like a bar trailer and maybe cater weddings and different events and things like that, I really think you could really dominate that space. Because if you, you think about when you go to a club 
you know, and you buy a drink and that drink costs 10 bucks, but you're buying them and you're buying them for other people and other people are buying them for you. And you look up and you've spent 120, $150, maybe even more if you're a big baller on drinks because the markup is ridiculous. You can get a couple bottles for cheap, you, especially if you're buying them in bulk. Uh, you get them cheap, mix them up however you mix them up and then upsell them. I think the most expensive part with that is gonna be your license. So you can get a permanent like liquor license or you can get a temporary license. A temporary license, you're gonna have to get one every time you decide that sell alcohol but i would just check with your local jurisdiction and figure out if you can do that or not if you can i think it's an amazing idea and i really think you can dominate in the event wedding birthday space so those are the ideas that i want to share with you feel free to take them and run check back with me let me know hey i implemented this idea and my business is doing this i really want to see that but like i said really think about the type of business that you want to go into based off of your startup costs, how labor intensive it's gonna be, the equipment that you're gonna need, the maintenance on the equipment. I didn't even add, I didn't even consider that, the maintenance on the equipment, because we have to get our hoods clean, we have to clean our fryers weekly, we have to change grease weekly, you know? So just really think about that. And also another huge point that I kind of missed out on is the scalability. So right now in my business, we have one unit right now. We're in the process of starting our food truck. So then we'll be at unit two. But if I were selling something like juice, I could already be at unit, let's say six or seven because of the type of capital that it will require to scale that versus trying to scale my current business. So scale is a huge factor in these things because the biggest limiting factor in scaling all the things that I mentioned before, like the equipment and the labor and things like that. So take this list, run with it. Let me know what you think. Don't forget to subscribe, like the video. Let me know what else you wanna see. And I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you in the next one.